Hey, welcome back to 1 Samuel. This morning we're moving over into chapter 16 and we're going to open the period of King David. So let's see what happens verses 1 to 5 right here. Now the Lord said to Samuel, well, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So here comes word finally. Uh, Samuel's been praying and he knows that the Lord has rejected Saul and now he's being sent to anoint the one that's going to be the king. Uh, notice some interesting business here in verse 2. How can I go? If Saul hears it, he's going to kill me. Just, just what we have just before this, what? Saul was not obedient and didn't kill King Agag and actually it was Samuel. Samuel, this old man Samuel, who took the sword and Hacked King Agag in pieces before the Lord, as it says in verse 33. Pretty rough stuff, but there's King Saul standing back as, as Samuel finishes his work. Now here we have Samuel who's uh, worried that Saul is going to kill him. And yet you go down a verse or two, and what do we have? When he enters the town, the, the people are trembling because this is, this is the prophet Samuel. So you've got a little bit of self-perception going on here. Samuel feels concerned that maybe King Saul would kill him. And yet you have the elders of the town that are... That are they have very high reverence for Samuel. Samuel, unlike Saul, Saul's kind of lost some points. Samuel is just as strong as ever in the eyes of the people. So interesting perceptions going on. But now then God gives him a, a little kind of a diversion here. Yeah, go ahead and take the heifer. You're going to sacrifice the heifer. Just tell them that. So that's kind of the way things roll here as we come along. But the interesting piece is that God is going to provide himself now a king. He has preserved himself, or he has seen for himself a king among the sons of Jesse. So, you know, we wonder sometimes about God. Is, is Where are the leaders today? Where are the leaders we need for, for God's people today? Uh, did, did God provide himself any leaders for the church, any pastors or any presidents that can help the church do what it needs to do in these crazy hours? Yes. I mean, that's got to be the answer, right? Yes. There are people out there that God is ready to use if the people will work with him. And so don't give up on God. Don't give up on the leaders that he sends. God has provided for himself leadership. And so the trouble is many times, as we've already talked about, many times the people are not obeying God and, and God gives them a leader that's suitable for their for their disobedience. And we don't want that to be true in our day. We want to be, so we need to be praying between the porch and the altar. Whenever a church or a denomination comes to that time when it's selecting leaders, we need to be praying, praying for the people that would be selected, praying for the people who would be voting or somehow selecting them, and pray that God's will will be done and that whoever it is that's selected will, will be able to rise, through the Spirit of God, be able to rise to the occasion to lead God's people in these crazy times. So let's not give up. Let's pause and pray. Dear Father in heaven, we need leaders that are people that follow your ways. Sometimes we look around and we are unclear who that would be. We're not sure what fruit we're seeing. The fruit we're seeing is not is not clear to us, which in itself is a signal and a warning to us. But Lord, help us to watch for the right fruit, and we pray that you will give us leaders that can help your church through these, these times of intensity that we are in now and going to be in. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a word for us. Let's be careful. Let's make sure that we're in the Lord's will and let the Lord work through us. And even if we're trembling, maybe God will give us a solution like he gave Samuel, something to get him out there and doing the thing he's supposed to be doing, even because sometimes our humanity gets the best of us and we begin to tremble. But when we're on God's mission, we can be sure that he will see us through. God be with you today in all that you do.